Hi everyone, this is Selena Belial, the founder and one of the instructors at CE Institute. And today I wanna to talk to you about retailing because if you're not already retailing products in your establishment, then you're probably losing on income. There's no such thing as practicing wrong by not retailing. If you don't wanna retail, you don't have to. And some people say, oh, I don't wanna be a salesperson. Well, you're not a salesperson, you're an educator when you're providing body work. You want to try and help someone feel better, right? That's your whole goal. Well, there are take-home products that can continue to help that client feel better. And if you're not retailing, those at your establishment. That's just missed income opportunities. There's a fairly good chance that your client, if they're coming to your office for some type of therapeutic benefit, that they're already online shopping for at-home products to help them feel better. Um, so if you're not retailing these, it's lost money out of your pocket. You get the benefit of going through and looking at many different product manufacturers and choosing what might be best for them to have at home. And then that's what you would sell in your practice. So today I'm going to review a article that I wrote for Massage Magazine a couple years ago. It's called Seven Ways to Promote Retail, Retain Clients, and Make More Money. And when I say retain clients, if you sold or are selling a product that helps the client feel better, and once they run out of that product, they might come back to your practice to purchase again. Now, they might go on Amazon too and try and find it there. But if they know it's easily available at your practice, and I'm recording this during COVID when we have huge product and supply shortages, sometimes you can't even get it on Amazon. It's sold out, right? Um, some of the things you need. So um, it's really nice to have retailing at your establishment. I want to say that 20% of your income on average should be product sales. That's an industry standard for the spa industry and I feel that should also be for the body work industry. I, I think it's pretty easily achievable. In my businesses, we usually had a 25 to 30% of a, um, a gross would just coming from product sales. That means if you earn 50,000 a year, you should be selling 10,000 additional in retail. So if you're doing $50,000 of hands-on service at an office, you should be really doing 60,000 gross because 10,000 more should be sold in retail. That's not your profit margin, those are your grosses. If you're doing 100,000 of hands-on service at your office, then you can sell uh, 120,000 hopefully gross with 20 grand being retail sales. Now, if you have an alcohol practice, it's kind of hard to retail. Sometimes you can have some products in your car uh, that you can run back again and suggest uh, after your treatment and so forth. But it, retailing is usually best provided when it can be done in an office or an establishment. So let's review the different steps you might want to take when you're going to add retail to your practice. And we hope you can find some products out there that would help you be able to grow that income, retain clients, and earn more money. I want to show you real quick, we're going to record another video called The MT's Guide to Choosing the Best Product Manufacturers because that is the number one step I have in seven ways to promote retail at your practice. Choosing your product manufacturer is really important. You need to get the right manufacturer. It's almost like they're a partner in your business. Their reputation reflects on your reputation. Okay, so I'm gonna go through some uh, little quick bullet points about choosing a product manufacturer, but if you haven't chosen a product manufacturer yet, please look for our other training, similar to how you just found this one of how to best choose that product manufacturer that's really very key in retailing. So in choosing your product manufacturer, there are some things that you would want from them that could help promote your business and promote your sales. First of all, any type of point of sale or gift with purchase programs, if your product manufacturer is actively trying to advertise and manufacture, and, and I'm sorry, uh, advertise and market your your products, that's great. It 
as massage therapists, we're not advertisers, right? So it's nice if somebody already has pre-printed posters and and even emails and literature and pictures and so forth that you can just forward to clients, uh, attach to your existing emails to clients and so forth. Many product manufacturers will have free product testers and samples. Some won't, but the larger manufacturers usually do. So, um, and sometimes they give you just a simple discount on their testers or they might just give you like two free testers per year and put a limit on it which is reasonable um, if a product manufacturer isn't investing in your a product manufacturer's exposure if they're not investing in a way for you to show clients what the product looks like feels like through a tester I, I would think twice about maybe choosing them many product manufacturers have free training and this is a wonderful way. It might not be CE credit training, but to learn about the efficacious ingredients in the products that you're using with clients. I love manufacturers that can teach you about this. Also, if you're an employer, that's a great asset of an employment benefit for your staff is, oh, we have free training in our establishment and allow the manufacturer to execute the free training for you. I also like product manufacturers that have a solid return or exchange program okay if they're not going to take the product back if the clients returned it and you have to eat that financial loss because the client didn't want it they tried it they didn't like it which is very rare but it can happen you want to be able to return that product to the manufacturer so ask them about what their protocols and procedures are for product returns and any type of advertising that you can do again I'm just going through the list of the article I wrote here uh, any posters or door cards or anything you can put up around your practice to advertise and promote the product is great um, and now let's get to choosing the right products number two and the seven steps when you're choosing the right products Think about what you might use in service because whatever you use in service, if you can retail that and have the client go home with that, great, okay? That's a way for the client to continue their service at home. It doesn't replace your service. You still wanna see them next week or next month, but maybe they're a tourist and you're never gonna see them again. By the way, tourist establishments should have a higher retail rate than your neighborhood establishments because your neighborhood establishments you're probably seeing that client maybe every week and they don't need to buy new products every week at your establishment where tourists you might see them once in a lifetime but they want to remember that experience at your establishment one of the ways they can remember that experience and continue that experience is buying a candle or buying a product that they can continually apply at home and that will continue their experience in your office okay so when you're choosing the right products think about what complements the service whether it be candles um, any type of take-home uh, products that they can use whether pain relief products are usually the best for massage therapists like a yoga bomb or anything that has a thermotherapy action to it a vasodilator anything that warms on the skin that can hopefully with that warming action relieve uh, muscle spasms or pain usually are are great sales okay so choosing the right products let's make sure that you're not if you're a massage therapist and trying to sell facial cleanser that's not part of your massage then that's probably probably not a good fit of the right product to sell within your establishment. Um, sometimes people even have jewelry, homemade jewelry items and stuff like that. These are kind of fun uh, for people who are shopping prior to their service or they wanna linger on your establishment after your service. Having those types of things, jewelry made by local uh, people to your area. I'm from Vermont. When people come visit Vermont, our little tiny state, people love buying some type of memento that was made in Vermont. Um, and that's an example of some type of memento purchase and retailing experience you can have at your establishment if you have enough space to house that type of retail. Um, now talking about product benefits, remember when I mentioned it's really important to try and get a manufacturer that might have free education for you? And it might be online education pre-recorded, great, still it's education. And the more you learn about your products, the more you can have that educational checkout. It shouldn't be a sales pitch 
checkout, it should be trying to explain to your client why they might want that retail product at home. And the candle is, is pretty simple. It's just an aroma that will continue the, the feeling of what they just had in the spa. But if you're looking at a product that you use during the treatment that helped them with their pain or whatever the benefit was of the product, you want to explain that and, and possibly the ingredients that helped relieve the pain, whether it was arnica or cinnamon or any other essential oil or um, any type of like, how, how, uh, excuse me, hyaluronic acid helps uh, plump the skin and diminish wrinkles. So one molecule of low molecular weight hyaluronic acid is supposed to bind about a thousand molecules of water to it. It's really hydrating uh, for the epidermis and dermis. So it, when you learn these types of ingredient, actions. These are things that you can provide to your client at checkout. And if they want that type of action, hopefully they'll purchase your product. Now, putting your sales opportunity into electronic action, take any type of promotional literature that your manufacturer is providing you and get that on your social media, okay? Because you want to create some excitement around the product. And you wanna keep that excitement going once they're in the office too. So whatever they saw on your social media, hopefully they'll see those real images when they enter their office. And now they're in that mystical place of where you have all the great goodies, right? Also, it, again, if you have any type of pictures or GIFs or PNGs or JPEGs, images that you can attach to your reminder emails, letting them know of any product promotions that are going on in your office, that's great too. Maybe you have a gift with purchase program, that's a GWP. Okay, and by the way, you don't necessarily always have to purchase from a product manufacturer. If it's Valentine's Day or like the Christmas holidays or something, you can even go to Dollar Tree. Make sure you get a wholesale uh, certificate to, so you don't have to pay the, the sales tax. And you can purchase like some um, uh, little dollar candles that are uh, of pine scent. And I would try and find name brand products at a company like Dollar Tree, um, but you can resell these at your establishment. Okay, so it doesn't always have to be from a big product manufacturer. Big Lots is another place where you can go in with your wholesale certificate and uh, acquire inventory on a pretty inexpensive uh, cost basis. You're going to avoid shipping because you're picking it up at the at their store and you can then bring it back to your establishment and retail it, usually with great profit margins. So once you have your product manufacturer, if there's any literature, you're gonna put it online, uh, posters and so forth, take pictures, attach these to your emails, do you can even make your own advertisements valentine's day you can cut out hearts and write different things on like some red construction paper right you can you can uh, type on your own computer and print and then cut out a heart and and write your own promotion and make your own posters around the office now product display and merchandising is really important if you have professional manufacturers they'll probably give you some merch merchandising material which is always helpful and and it's really nice to have any type of products that you're promoting for any particular month or at, um, maybe it's bridal season or something like that to just pile some of this product up at the cash register, okay? That's why at the checkout line, there's heaps of product at the grocery store and any checkout in a retailing situation. Those last minute eye-catching purchases are pretty big. So we wanna take advantage of that too. Your checkout, sh if you wanna retail, it should not be an empty counter. It should have retail all over it so that a client, they might, oh, you know what? I was missing this. I'm gonna grab one of these and hopefully that will obviously help your income. Now the educational checkout. As I mentioned earlier, education from your manufacturer about your product ingredients and why it's effective and why the client might want it at home, this is key. So if you can get education from your product manufacturer, great. You're going to share this education at the checkout. Hopefully there's a tester where the client can feel, smell uh, the product, look at the box or the, the product itself of the list of ingredients, make sure they're not allergic to anything in the product, see the active ingredients that they might want to acquire 
to continue their therapeutic benefit if that's what you're retailing. There's many different things you can do in your educational checkout and professional product manufacturers will usually have greater information to share with your clients about why you would want their products. So I hope this helps you find some reasons of why you would want to retail in your establishment. It's not just about becoming a salesperson. You might be improving the client's treatment if you can keep some therapeutic benefits that were achieved in the establishment, keep those going at home. Okay, there's even those hot packs that you can just, um, there are these metal um, clickers inside, you click them, it becomes hot, almost like a hydroculator pack. It doesn't have the moist heat of a hydroculator pack, but it's still a hot pack and they can put this on like their muscle spasms or or areas where they have muscle uh, contractions and restriction and hope and hopefully soften that that soft tissue and these are at home packs they just boil them and that makes them all collagenous or, or the viscosity change and it'll be room temperature and then they just do the clicker again when they want to heat that pack those types of retail items they're they're you know they might sell for like a hundred dollars Okay, and, and that's a great uh, little um, asset and benefit to add to your practice and increase your sales. So again, my name is Selena Belisle. I'm here at CE Institute. We'd love to see you in one of our CE classes, whether it be pre-recorded, live, online, or live in person <laughs> at the university. We hope that you uh, join us for another class, and until then, be safe.